Today we are going to be looking at a form of childhood brain cancer called diffuse intrapontine glioma, or DIPG. As the name would suggest, in this form of cancer, tumours arise in an area of the brainstem called the pons. This area of the brainstem contains many nuclei which control functions vital to life, including sleep, respiration and swallowing. The tumours in DIPG are high-grade gliomas, meaning they arise from the supportive glial cells in the brain. This family of cells helps support and protect neurons and includes astrocytes, microglia and oligodendrocytes. The term glioma refers to any tumour arising from these cells. DIPG tumours are highly aggressive and infiltrate throughout the pons. They account for approximately 10% of central nervous system tumours in children and are usually diagnosed between the ages of 6 and 9 years old. DIPG tends to present with acute onset neurological symptoms, typically a triad of long tract signs with motor weakness, cranial neuropathies and cerebellar signs. These symptoms tend to arise due to compression of the nerves and tracts and the exact symptoms in an individual will depend on the location and the spread of the tumours. Prognosis for DIPG is extremely poor. It is universally fatal with a median survival of 9 to 11 months. The only treatment currently available which can affect survival is radiotherapy, but even this is extremely limited. There are many challenges to the effective treatment of DIPG. The delicate anatomical location of the tumour makes surgical resection virtually impossible. The tumours are highly aggressive and spread rapidly, so prompt treatment is required. In contrast to many other types of brain tumour, in DIPG, the blood-brain barrier is preserved. This hinders the delivery of chemotherapeutic agents, which have been effective in the management of other forms of paediatric glioma. Under normal physiological circumstances, the blood-brain barrier is crucial for maintaining homeostasis within the brain. It is a specialised endothelial layer which tightly regulates the movement of molecules both in and out of the brain. The tight junctions between endothelial cells limit paracellular movement. This means, for the majority of molecules, a specific transporter is required for the transcellular route. In addition to the endothelial cells and tight junctions, the blood-brain barrier also consists of parasites, microglia and nerve terminals, all closely associated with the endothelium. These other cells play supportive roles and help maintain the function of the barrier. The main functions of the blood-brain barrier are to maintain a consistent microenvironment, protect the brain from exogenous toxins and neurotransmitters, retain neurotransmitters within the brain to allow recycling, and to modulate the entry of metabolites. Whilst all these functions are vital for protecting the brain, they present a major challenge when trying to get drugs into the brain for therapeutic purposes. Most major drug molecules are polar proteins with high molecular weight, meaning they are unable to cross the blood-brain barrier. Direct administration to the brain avoids the challenges of the blood-brain barrier, but tends to result in poor penetration as perfusion throughout the brain is slow. A new strategy being investigated for use in DIPG and other forms of brain tumours is convection-enhanced drug delivery. In this approach, microcatheters are placed directly into the tumour tissue and hydraulic pressure is used to push the therapeutic agent through the interstitial space, rather than relying on diffusion down a concentration gradient. This method has the benefit of targeting the drug directly at the area of interest. The concentration falls off rapidly at the border, reducing the effect on surrounding tissue. Convection-enhanced delivery is being investigated for the treatment of adult glioblastoma multiforme and has shown promising results. Increasing use of stereotactic biopsy for sampling DIPG tumours has found that the epigenetic dysregulation plays a central role in development of the tumours. 90-95% to of DIPG samples have been found to share a common mutation in histone 3, H3K27M. The discovery of this common mutation identified a new therapeutic target. Histone acetylation is important in the regulation of transcription, as it affects the condensation of chromatin. 
Histone deacetylases are a class of enzymes involved in the process and regulate a set of genes required for the survival and growth of cancer cells, but not of normal cells. Histone deacetylase inhibitors have been shown to induce cell cycle arrest and death in cancer cells. Panabinostat, a panhistone deacetylase inhibitor, has shown efficacy in preclinical trials in DIPG. Another approach being investigated in DIPG is drugs which target the apoptotic pathways in cancer cells, such as a drug called ONC201. Cancer cells are able to upregulate their anti-apoptotic mechanisms in response to such drugs, which does limit their efficacy. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.